everyone. It's the Farmista. Today, my daughter and I uh, were making a Dutch apple pie, and um, I took off the original audio because we were bustling about this morning, and everybody was getting ready for the day, and um, everybody was just in and out of the kitchen, so I wasn't really talking a whole lot about what I was doing. I was just talking to my daughter and my husband and my son, um, so I thought that I would just do a voice over kind of explaining what we're doing. So you start out um, making a pastry shell and I start with one cup of flour, quarter teaspoon salt, one quarter cup butter or margarine, and then three to four tablespoons of water. Um, in this particular crust I probably should have done about two and a half tablespoons because um, it's been just very kind of humid and wet lately and that does affect your kitchen. Um, so I could have done with two and a half tablespoons and then I probably wouldn't have had to add a little bit of extra flour at the end because it was a bit sticky. So I always cut in the butter, um, as cold as possible straight from the fridge. Um, and I don't have a pastry blender, so I usually just kind of start out with a fork or go straight in with my hands. And that has always worked well. And I always like to say that my pies are artisan pies. They're nothing super fancy looking. Um, food is made to eat, not just to look at. So I don't worry too much about it being Instagram worthy. I um, more so worry about it tasting delicious. So here we're mixing. And then in a little bit here... Um, we're going to roll it out after I add that additional flour uh, so it's not quite so sticky. So once we got it uh, to the desired uh, consistency, um, I did let my daughter go ahead and start to roll out the pastry shell. Um, I mean, she can't really, she can't do anything wrong to it. It's just like playing with her Play-Doh. So, um, I let her kind of get started on it. Um, and then we were trying to work on getting it to size here. Eventually she got kind of bored with the process and decided to go off and play for a bit. And that's totally fine. Um, so I was just working at it with this mini rolling pin and um, trying to get it up to size again. I, I, I think it was a little short on flour and a little too much water, uh, so it didn't quite get straight to the size um, for my pastry plate as it normally does. Normally that recipe is just perfect for my 8-inch pie plate. So my ratios were a little off this time. That happens. It still worked out just fine. Just took a little extra work to get it there. Um, and again, I, I don't worry about doing anything super fancy, anything, any designs or anything like that on my crust. I just fit it to the plate, um, fill it with my pie filling and go with that. Here my daughter came back to help me uh, crimp the edge of the pie plate. That's one of her favorite things to do is uh, push up the little uh, pie crust on the edge. Now I just uh, placed that pastry shell into the fridge and um, got my daughter a cup of milk. And now we're going to be moving on to the filling. Okay, so for the filling, you need four or five large tart apples, according to the recipe. Uh, for this time, I had some very small apples. Um, I used six, and there was, I honestly could have had more uh, apples in there. But since my crust was a little short, it worked out fine. This is a very forgiving recipe. So I just peel them. 
Um, and then according to the recipe here, it says pair, halve, and slice apples and arrange in the pastry shell. Now you'll see that I do something different with that. I don't place them directly into the shell. I actually, um, I peel them, I cut out the core and I slice them. Um, you know, nothing super fancy. Again, I don't worry about them all being the same thickness. Um, just however that works up is how, how it is. So I do slice them and I put them directly back into my mixing bowl. And you'll see throughout this that I actually use the same mixing bowl for all three steps. There's no reason you can't have pie crust on your apples and some apple cinnamon on your topping crumble. Um, so really, you don't need to be diff dirtying three separate bowls when all of the flavors go together in the one pie and it all gets baked at the same time. It has never hurt anything for there to be a little bit of cinnamon left behind when I make the topping or a little bit of flour left behind when I go and add in the apples. It doesn't make a difference at all. So the next thing that I do is I pour half a cup of sugar over the sliced apples. And then the recipe calls for one teaspoon of cinnamon. You'll see that I actually add two. I like that extra cinnamon in there. Then I stir them up. Um, this kind of gets the juices started going. They make their own little sauce in there. My daughter joined in to help stir with her unicorn spatula. Now we are dumping the apples into the pie shell. And I'm just going to set the filled pie shell to the side while we work on the crumble topping. For the crumble topping, you're going to have half a cup of sugar and one third, <clears throat> excuse me, one third cup of butter and three quarter cups of flour, three quarters of a cup of flour. Uh, so I actually start with the sugar, I then add the flour, and then I cut in the butter. And one third cup is actually five and one third tablespoons of butter. And I usually want that to be as cold as possible as well, though it is going straight into the oven after this. And again, when I do make the crumble topping, you know, I don't have a pastry blender that chops that all up real fine. I start out with a fork and then go in with my clean hands. And I do always make sure that I remove my ring for this uh, that's for two reasons. One, you can get germs and bacteria um, kind of stuck in your rings, and so it's a good idea for food prep to remove those. And then also, oh, sorry about that, a little bit of an interruption. Um, so you can get uh, bacteria, you know, caught up in your ring, but also um, pie crust and butter and flour really like to stick in there. So I just make sure that I go ahead and remove my ring. Um, I then sprinkled the topping on and it's going in the oven at 375. This time it took about 45 minutes to cook. And again, this pie was a little short. Um, it wasn't filled quite as much as usual. And there it is, straight out of the oven, all done. It was hot and bubbly and delicious. The hardest part about making this pie is waiting for it to cool. That is all for Vlogtober Day 5. Thanks so much for joining me today.